Hi friends, it's Taylor. Welcome back to the channel where I share my financial self-care journey using Monarch Money. I make videos on monthly budget reviews, financial planning, money goals, and other lifestyle content that all connects to my goals of being financially independent. If that's something you're interested in, be sure to join our community by subscribing and hitting the bell. Today we're doing my budget closeout for January 2024, which is the first budget closeout for the year and I'm very excited to see how this year's budget goes. The first thing we're gonna do is compare my spending trends between December 2023 and January 2024. Normally, this chart would be here on my dashboard, but you cannot see this spending chart anywhere else in Monarch, so I have to take screenshots. I'm gonna drag over this window here so we can see my spending from December is in white, and my spending from January is in this pinkish reddish color. We can see that my spending was lower in January as compared to December and that's because in December I spent a lot of money on gifts and things like that. As for the actual amounts, in December I spent $3,371.20 and in January I spent $2,871.39. Now we're going to head over to the accounts tab and refresh slash update all of my accounts and off screen I have already verified that all of my bank account balances are accurate so we're going to skip past these. My investment accounts are accurate. As for my liability accounts, these are all manual accounts. So on a monthly basis, I will add in whatever transaction went to these accounts. I think that I already did these earlier in January, but I'm just gonna go through each account and make sure that I did. So we see for this college debt one, I added the transaction for January 27th. Nelnet is not gonna have any changes until October of this year because my student loan payments are on pause. For my business membership, I did make that payment on January 15th. And for the rent balance payment, I made that January 5th. This task account here is actually my work reimbursement account. And I just checked that balance one more time and saw that I actually need to update the balance. So in task, we'll see that my available balance is actually 157.96. So I'm just going to add a transaction, make it a debit, and give this some details. And we're gonna make sure we adjust the account balance by $25 so that it actually goes down. And we'll click add transaction. And we can see that my current balance here in Monarch matches up with my current balance here in Task. So that is reconciled. Now with all of my accounts reconciled, we will take a look at my net worth. So in December, I had a net worth of negative $27,870.32. And in January, my net worth was negative $26,695.98, which means my net worth went up by $1,174.34, and that is amazing progress. Next, we're gonna head to my recurring tab, which is the bill calendar, and I'm just gonna go back to January and make sure that I have a check mark next to all of my recurring expenses. You'll notice that for some of these, mainly the Instacart groceries, it looks like I overspent, but I just realized that I've been buying household supplies through Instacart. So it looks like I'm overspending on groceries and I'm really not. So to resolve this, I am going to create a new merchant called Instacart Household and I will just split these transactions so that I can see how much I'm actually spending on groceries and how much I'm spending on household. And that leads us into the next process, which is going over to the transactions tab. I'm gonna set the date range to last month, which was January. And I like to sort my transactions from old to new so that the earliest transactions in the month are up here on the top. So I'm gonna review all of these other transactions off screen, but once we get to the Instacart groceries transactions, I'm gonna show you all how I create a new merchant and split those transactions into that category so that my budget is more accurate. All right, so I've reviewed all of my transactions for the month and I realized that one of the transactions, which is Apple Arcade, is actually gonna be a recurring merchant now because I decided to open my subscription again. So I'm gonna open this transaction, click the three dots in the top right corner and mark this merchant as recurring. So that way it shows up on my bill calendar. This will be every month. This will be an expense. 
and it usually takes two days to process. So I'm going to start with the 24th and click save. Now we have this recurring tag here at the top, and we also have this calendar icon that shows up next to the transaction. So if I head over to the recurring tab, this should be on my calendar now. There we go. All right, now it is time to review my groceries like I talked about earlier so that I can reallocate the numbers to the household budget as necessary. So I'm going to filter for the category of groceries and make sure we are just on last month. And then I'm going to edit all of these transactions and change the review status to needs review. Click save and apply to all four. The reason I'm doing this is because I like to go to the needs review tab. And then as I have reconciled each transaction, it'll disappear from this view. You'll see exactly how that works in just a second. So for these two transactions on January 8th, this actually was part of the same order, which was a total of $118.07. And in reviewing my receipt in Instacart, it turns out that I actually just spent more money than expected on groceries. So I am going to mark both of these as reviewed and you'll see that they disappear here. Next, we have this transaction on January 19th and it looks like $18.79 of that actually went to household. So I'm going to open this transaction and come over here to split. And I am going to create a new merchant down here called Instacart. Oops, yeah, Instacart household. In this category under household, I'm going to say that I spent $18.79. And I also spent $4.88 on something health related. So I'm going to add another split and call this Instacart household again and call this health and wellness. And we'll put $4.88. And it automatically calculates how much we actually spent on groceries. So I'm just going to type in that leftover number here. And we're called this groceries and click split into three transactions. And now when I open this up, we see that it was split between other categories and I can open those splits again and see them here. I consider this one to be updated now. So I'm going to click the check mark. And now we just have this last transaction. And looking at this transactions receipt, it looks like I spent $22.70 on some things for Coda. Once again, I'm going to open the transaction, go to split. And if I do Instacart household now, you'll see that it actually shows up as a merchant I can click on. So I'm going to do that. In this category, I will call it pet supplies and we'll type in 2270. We'll automatically get the amount that's left over. So we'll do 12270 and update this to groceries and split into two transactions. We'll click the check mark. And when I click here to view all transactions, if I scroll down, we'll see the splits here, for example. Now, when we go do my budget, everything will be accurate because I have split those transactions into the relevant categories instead of putting all of it into the groceries category. And then it looks like I went over budget this month. And speaking of the budget, that is our next step in this monthly budget routine. So we'll head over to the budget tab. I think you all know that I like to expand all of the categories and start from the top. And I'm going to go back one month to January because that's the month we are reviewing. And let's start with my income. So I earned $3,289 from my job, but this will be the last month that I get that much because starting in February, my income will be going down a little bit because I'll start contributing to my retirement, especially since my job is providing a match. So going forward, I will have a little bit less to work with each month. But I think because it's not a drastic amount, I'll have enough time to adjust to it. As for last month's rollover, that is $227. If I expand this row, we'll see that I earned $14 in interest. So I'm going to adjust my budget to match up with that. And now I currently have 14 extra dollars to work with. That's it for my planned income. Let's go into potential. So I got $127 in reimbursements this month. And this was from my work travel account, a refund from Amazon, also something from Coda's pet insurance, and another reimbursement from my job for the phone bill. I got $44 back in some loans that I lent someone earlier in the month. 
And lastly, I earned $59 from my business. I am just excited for the growth and I appreciate all of you supporting me in my journey and I can't wait to see what future months hold. That's it for my planned and potential income. So the total amount that I was working with this month was $3,760. Now we're gonna move to my expenses. So those of you who have been watching my monthly budget reviews pretty regularly may notice that this is a new category here at the top called placeholders and this is exactly what it sounds like. They are just placeholder categories so that I can see how much I'm working with. In addition to this month's rollover line item, which just holds the leftover amount that I had in my bank account, I also have this category called left to budget and you'll notice it has the same name as this one up here in the top right. This category just allows me to quickly move money between categories in case I go over budget. And if you hear any noise in the background, Coda is eating, so I hope it's not too loud. But for now, I am just going to set these two to zero so you see what we're doing. And we see that my total left to budget, as in unspent money this month, at least right now, is $269. Because this category has the same name, I'm just gonna move this entire 269 to this category. I'm gonna scroll down here, and as we're going through each budget item, you'll see how this category really works to our benefit. So running utilities was as expected at 983. As for groceries, I thought that I was spending 421, but because I adjusted those transactions earlier and split them into the relevant categories, we see that my spending was only $375. So I'm just gonna come over here and click the remaining number next to the groceries line item. And when I click this, you'll see that we have some smart options. So it notices that I have extra money left over in groceries and is saying you overspent in therapy, so let's move that money over there. So I'm going to click save, and we'll see that it adjusted my budget here. And as for therapy, it upped it to the actual spending and brought that back to zero. So now we have $6 left over. I'm gonna click into that again, and it notices that we were over budget and pet supplies, so it'll move that over there too, and I'll click save. And now this is zeroed out and we are slowly funding the categories that I have overspent. Let's do some more examples so you can see how this is working. For household, I overspent by $18, so I'll click in here again, and now we see that it is going to pull from the left to budget category. Remember, that left to budget category is just a placeholder for the number that we would have had up here in the top right anyways, and it's doing it in the amount that we were over budget, which was $18, so I'll click save, and it zeroes the column out. Transportation was already fine, so let's do pet supplies. I was over budget by $16, so I'll click into this. Again, it pulls from the left to budget category already in the amount that we need, click save. And I'm gonna continue to do this for other categories because I think you can see how smart Monarch is being by pulling from money where they notice we have extra left over. For pet health, I was only over budget by $1, which is pretty funny, but I'm just going to adjust that and click save and my renter's insurance never changes, that's $11. So we'll close out needs and go to wants. So for therapy, I spent $80. I was over budget by $5 for health and wellness, so we'll just adjust that. For personal subscriptions, that was as expected. Business was 93. Restaurants was 41, self-care was 137, and gifts and loans, again, over budget by just a dollar, so I'll click into that and click save. And now, without us having to manually type in any of these numbers, we have zeroed out our budget for all of these categories, and that's just gonna make every process in the future much quicker. So I'll collapse once. Wealth, looks like everything here is already as we planned. So we'll go ahead and close this out and nothing in the other section. So now let's look at my goals. You'll see here that my actuals are actually higher in my goals and that is because of my interest. So if I click into the moving category, we'll see that I earned $8.20 in interest and because that is still part of the moving account, it has already assigned it to this goal, 
which means that this $8 in interest that I earn is showing up here. Unfortunately, we can't do the whole remaining column trick with these. We'll have to manually adjust them, but I think that's fine. So I got $8 extra in interest for the moving fund. So that was a total of $423 to this goal. And then $101 to the bills because I got a dollar in interest and the same for the one month emergency fund. This is actually going to be the new place that I put my acorns transfers, at least the placeholder amount. Previously under the wealth group, I had a category called contributions and I was just typing in $5 a month to show that that's where my acorns transfers were going. But I realized I already had this goal here, so I might as well just put the $5 there. And if we show my other unbudgeted, we'll see that I also got $4 in interest for my emergency fund and there we go. And it shows here in the top right that we are in the negative of $14, but that just means we need to adjust the left to budget. So I'm just gonna reduce this by $14, which gives us 214, and now we are at zero. Now, before I reconcile this number with my bank account, you'll notice that my wants category is off by a dollar here. I already reached out to Monarch and they said this is something that they are working on, but for now, we just kind of have this weird leftover number here. So the numbers we're actually going to be comparing our bank balance to is this number here, $215, which is the sum of 214 and one. And I'm gonna bring over the screenshot. When I checked my bank balance at the end of January, we'll see that it was $215.62 and that matches the 215 that we have here. So we can consider this completely reconciled. I do have a video I'm planning about how I reconcile my bank balance with Monarch. I'm not sure if it'll come out before or after this video, but regardless, I'll leave it linked down below so you all can see exactly what I'm doing. Hopefully the addition of my screenshot here kind of helps you understand that as long as these two numbers match up, we are good to go. Now we're going to head into cash flow and review my savings rates for this month. So for January, I do the Sankey diagram and do it by group. And now we will compare each of my groups to the guidelines that I'm trying to follow. So for needs, I spent 49.4%. For wants, I spent 15.2%. And for wealth and savings combined, I dedicated 35.5%. I pretty much reached the percentages that I wanted to stay at, so I'm pretty happy. Now let's head over to my goals page and we will take a look at my goal progress. So the first thing you'll notice is that I have this pop-up at the top that says my balances have been updated and can be used to reach my goals. This is because I have one savings account that is split between my bills and my gifts. And so I get this pop-up anytime my savings account balance has changed and it wants me to reallocate in between accounts. So I'm gonna click update now. If I do add to goals evenly, it'll basically put 50 cents in each of these categories, but I'm just gonna add the full 99 cents that I got in interest to the bills one because that is the priority right now. So I'll click add 99 cents and we'll see it's been adjusted and I click done. And now that banner goes away and we can take a look at my progress. So the moving fund is at $2,487.94, which is just over 40% of the total amount that I wanted to have saved. The bills account is at $334.64. This one is going to be a little tricky because this 1215 is just how much I plan to spend on my bills throughout the entire year. So I'm not really looking at this as a percentage, but just to see how much I have in there. The gift sinking fund is going to stay empty until April because I spent a lot on gifts in December and January, and then I still have more gifts to get in February and March. So I'm just not seeing the point in contributing to that right now. Next, we have my 1K emergency fund, which I like to keep at $1,000 at all times, just in case of like those immediate emergencies. And because it's been at $1,000 for a while, now it is just accruing interest. So I'm not really doing anything to it. I'm just letting it grow. Then I have my secondary emergency fund account. 
The overall goal is to save one year's worth of expenses, but for now we're just doing it baby steps at a time and I'm just saving for one month of expenses, which is gonna be $2,400. And I currently have $301.49 saved, which is about 13%. And then I have my Acorns goal. I am trying to invest $80 by the end of the year and keep in mind, I'm only putting $5 towards this per month. So this is a very uh, slow progressing goal, which I'm fine with. And then my retirement, I would like to have 2,500 in here by the end of the year. And that is including my employer match. So right now I'm at $695.37, which is about 30% of my goal. And that's just been with my contributions. But once my employer match kicks in next month, I think we'll start seeing some more rapid progress. Now we're here in my Google Sheets projections dashboard, which I am trying to get released as soon as I can, but I just keep running into bugs. And I'm also trying to incorporate it in with other sheets that I have. So yeah, it's just a lot of experimentation and I do not want to release an unfinished product, but I did just kind of want to show you all behind the scenes of the iterations that I'm doing. So that way, when the actual template comes out, you guys kind of have an understanding of how it works. So one new thing that I've done to the chart is I have added a splicer so that I can only see the relevant data that I need to. For example, if I just wanted to see my data from 2023, I now have the option to filter for that. So I'm just going to say before this year, actually 2024 and now we are just showing 2023's data. I will do a detailed tutorial and everything once I actually release the template. So don't worry about memorizing any of this now. I just wanted to show you all the new edition that we have and to show how this is slowly coming together. But for the sake of this video, I just want to see last year and this year, 2024. So I'll adjust my filters back and we can see that my charts updated. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit so I can see it better. Another new thing that I'm doing is I'm going to use these columns differently. So instead of me just typing in my actuals every month and not keeping the historical projections, I'm going to put the projections here and the actuals over here on the right so that I'll be able to see that difference on the chart. For example, let's say for January, I thought that I was going to have 5,000 in cash, but instead I had 10,000 we are now able to see that difference in the chart instead of everything just matching up. If I ended up having an actual of $10,000, let's say next month, I'm like, okay, let's see if I get 11,000. And then in this month, I actually get 15. Once again, I can see that difference of expectations month by month. And then throughout the rest of the years, I can get a little bit more exact, but I really wanted to be able to look back and say, oh, I thought I was going to have this much, but I ended up having more than that. And I think it'll be a little bit more motivating. So that's how we're going to use today's data. And I'm just going to undo the changes that I made. So for January, I thought I would have $4,393. And instead, I had more than that at $4,512.34. And so my projections went up ever so slightly. For investments, I thought I would have $712.74. And instead, I had $728.03. And it adjusted a little bit. For my debt balance, I thought I would have $32,135.33. And instead I have $31,936.35. And we can see it went down just a little bit more. So I am slowly tackling this debt. Lastly, for net worth, I expected to have negative $27,070.73. My net worth was actually higher than that at negative $26,695.98. And, 98 cents. and you can see the chart adjusted a little bit there as well. So that's it for my monthly budget routine. I hope you found some ideas to make it more helpful for you to learn how a monarch can work for you. If you're interested in signing up for monarch, I will leave my link below where you can have a free extended 30 day trial. And I'll also link to the financial resources that I have in my shop. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.